guitar. Wish I knew how to play. I just spell some of the gloom. Will the circle be unbroken? It's been some time since we set foot into Irrational Games' fantastical underwater world in their original mega hit, Bioshock. Now, we take to the skies in their latest release, Bioshock Infinite. Is Courtney Draper really groundbreaking in her starring role as Elizabeth? Will this be the game to triumph over the original first title? Let's take a look. The sky. Uh, uh, hello. Ah! Oh, Bioshock Infinite takes place during 1912, following Booker DeWitt, voice acted by Troy Baker, on the task to relocate and retrieve a girl named Elizabeth in order to repay a debt owed to the Lutus twins and bring her back to New York. Booker is then thrown into the brand new world that Irrational Games has crafted, known as Columbia, an American city floating in the sky. You quickly learn that the city follows a prophet known as Comstock, a holy man bowed down to by many. Infinite takes a risk by using the racial themes of 1912 to help with the narrative to immerse you into a world and also have it be a crucial point of the story. This was pulled off incredibly well as the story began to unfold. Why is one bathroom for colors and the other for whites? It just is. Seems like an unnecessary complication. The characters Booker and Elizabeth are memorable with their completely different views on what the world is that they live in. It felt like both Troy Baker and Courtney Draper connected wonderfully together and you can see that as the game progresses. Elizabeth is certainly the most iconic character with her ability to open tears and with her connections to characters in the story. The story is thought provoking, enticing, dark, beautifully executed and completely immersive. One of the greatest adventures I've had the pleasure of enjoying. But this one doesn't look clean to me. It's safe to say that Bioshock Infinite strikes gold with its visual appeal. The world imagined is teeming with life and inspiration, floating buildings attaching to each other, gay bands singing together, festivals, carnivals, everything is so beautiful and immersive, leading you into a world that you don't ever want to leave. It seems where you see someone singing in a war-torn area, or spending time to get to know more about Elizabeth that really bring out the detail of the world around you. You find yourself getting lost inside the floating city, wanting to learn everything you can and each minute is spent with the enjoyment of the new world. The level of details is at an all-time high, where even the badges on soldiers have high-definition textures. This is truly the highest quality games can get. The violence is also still here, giving you the feel that this is no fairy tale that you are in. In fact, far from it. Bioshock shows you a marvelous world and then immediately pulls you back into reality with the intense violence. In this game you have god rays, smoke, gorgeous lighting, high quality textures, and it is oozing with polish. To top it all off, this is by far one of the best PC ports to any AAA title I've seen for some time. Field of view, sliders, anisotropic filtering, DirectX 11 support, settings ranging from low to ultra quality, rebindable keys, the ability to turn off mouse smoothing, and of course, gamepad support. This is everything you could ever want and more for PC enthusiasts that are looking for a top-of-the-line game that looks fantastic and runs extremely well. Bioshock Infinite nails the atmosphere, nails the mood, nails the look, and the music is top-notch. It's truly unbelievable. Need this? You need salt! Fans of the original Bioshock will feel right at home with Infinite. Plasmids have been replaced with Vigors, and Eve replaced with Salts. These work in the same way, however, they give a slight distinction between the two games and aesthetics. Well, you only live once. 
Players will need to plan their ways of attack carefully by selecting the right vigors to use. You'll have plenty of unique abilities such as throwing balls of fire that melt your enemies or throwing them up in the air with a bunking bronco and sniping them like fish in a barrel. The choice is always yours on how to proceed. One of the added mechanics when Elizabeth is around is that you can have her open tears that will either have ammunition, health packs, or crate hooks to latch onto. This allows more planning when plotting your attacks. You'll also be able to use rail lines by attaching to them with your fancy skyhook that's magnetized allowing to speedily traverse the battlefield. At first this feels awkward, but you'll quickly become a master of it and will see the many different ways you can use to attack. Elizabeth will also scavenge for medkits, salts, and ammo while you're in combat to aid you. And even though she's AI controlled, she doesn't have a health bar or any way of dying by enemy shooting. This is great because it allows you to focus on killing your opponents instead of feeling like this is just some big escort mission. You will end up wanting Elizabeth to be with you rather than somewhere else. Another added feature is the addition of equipment. These consist of top hats, shirts, pants, and shoes, each giving you different unique abilities. These are all in the same place each playthrough, however they will be different every time you pick them up in future playthroughs, which adds to slight replayability. Guns feel weighty and responsive, and they mix in well with the time that Infinite is set in. Enemies have changed slightly as well. No longer are splicers in the game, you now have normal people alongside people with vigors. Big daddies have been replaced with handymen, and these guys are just as difficult, possibly even more so, which is a fantastic feature for the franchise. Boss fights are fun and challenge you to play at your best each time you get into an encounter. Lastly, the game has four difficulty modes, one being unlockable after a game completion called the infamous 1999 mode. If you're up for a challenge, this game will kick your ass, which is one of Bioshock's charms since the first game. I found myself dying a lot and it made me have to think outside the box in order to get through it. This by far raises the bar of a great first person shooter. Look at these, they're amazing! Which one do you like more, this one or, or this? The bird is beautiful, and the cage is somber, but there's really something special about it. The one on the left. Are you sure? I'm sure. With a phenomenal story, beautiful art direction giving us an immersive world to visit, and gameplay that actually requires you to think, Bioshock Infinite goes above and beyond to outperform its predecessors. This will be a game that will be most definitely talked about for coming years as one of the most thought-provoking stories in video games. Topping it all off, the PC port is superb and beyond expectations. Overall, I was captivated from the moment I entered the world of Bioshock Infinite until the moment I had to say goodbye. Bioshock Infinite gets a 5 out of 5. Come on. Come on. Everything's gonna be okay. Will you just turn around and talk to me and we can- Thank you for watching my review. Did you get a chance to play Bioshock Infinite? We here at TGN want to know what you think, so leave a comment below. But until next time, I'm Akabine101, and I'll see you in the next review.